the next part of this chapter is talking about something called regression. OK, so let's talk about all this. Usually, we usually draw a line of best fit on a scatter diagram to estimate other values. This line is called the least squares regression line, or it is just called the regression line. So basically what we're saying here is that the line of best fit that we try and draw has got a proper name. And one of these proper names for it is a particular method that we do is called the regression line. So if you ever see the regression line, we're really just talking about the line of best fit. But at A level, we don't guess where the line of best fit goes at GCSE. Remember in GCSE, you used to kind of try and, and draw it in such a way, but it might have looked different to the person sat next to you. Instead, it is calculated and the method is no longer in the specification, but our calculators can still do it, but you won't be examined on it. The regression line will be in the form y equals a plus bx, but really y equals a plus bx is just a straight line. It could have quite easily, if we wanted it to have been y equals mx plus c. It's the same thing, really. It's just been switched around. So GCSE style, what we would have done is we would have tried to draw a line of best fit. So for this is my maths and English score one I used earlier. We probably would have tried to draw it like this going through them. We tried to have roughly the same number of points on each side. Like I just said, different people would have had different um, lines of best fit. So we're going to actually now have an official line of best fit that will be this one that we've got here. How would we use it at GCSE? Well, we would use it to make predictions. And we should really only be using this to make predictions about the uh, the independent variable along the bottom is usually how we would, we would do this. So for example, let's say that somebody got a score of 50 in English and they missed the maths test. So we want to predict the maths test for them. I want to predict the maths test score. So what we would do is we go to 50, we would go up to the line. This is not very straight drawn here. And we would come across, I'm going to see if I can use my actual straight line drawing here. And it looks like I predict a mark of 58. So I predict a maths score. This predicts a maths score of about 58. So that's how we did that at GCSE. We're going to think about what we'll be doing now for A-level. So a little bit more on regression, because I've just told you that this is how we come up with this. This is going to tell you what's actually happened here. And again, you won't be examined on this. So I've got a diagram where I've got the, a different context. I've got the amount of time spent revising in X and the exam mark in Y. And all of these different dots that I've got here are the different points of different students. OK. I've given us the equation of the regression line here. And what I've said is what we've done here is we've come up with a model to explain the data. And in this case, the, the way we're going to try and explain this data is this red line that I'm sorry, this this line I'm tracing out with my laser beam here. And that line is y equals a plus bx or y equals 20 plus 3x. We then tried to set a and b here and here such that the resulting y value matches the actual exam marks as closely as possible. The regression bit is the actual act of setting the parameters, the a and b parts of our model, here the gradient and the y-intercept of the line of best fit, to best explain the data. So the act of regression is figuring out what these two numbers here should be that will make this line of best fit the best one. So one type of line of best fit is called the least squares regression line. What this does is it minimizes the sum of the squares of these errors. So all of these little um, lines I've drawn here, so D1, D2, D3, D4, D5, D6, and D7, is how far away the points are from the line of best fit. If we can make these um, black lines here as small as possible, then we've got a really, really good line of best fit. Again, you're not going to be assessed on this. It's just telling you where it comes from. So we square them all. And we try and minimize what these distances are these distances are. Part of the reason that we square these errors is so that each distance is treated as a positive value, because obviously some of them are above the line and some of them are below the line, and we need to counteract that with them being with them being squared. So that's the technique about how you would find a line of best fit, but our calculators do all of this for us. So a little bit more about regression, because in year one, we are only going to be covering linear regression. This is an example of linear regression, this straight line that I have here.
where our chosen model is a straight line. But if the data does not appear to be in a straight line, then we should not use a linear model. So for example, if I have time, which is X, and rabbit population, which is Y, I'm just gonna point out these are the different data points that we've got here. And what you'll notice is that if we try to do a linear regression line, it's not a very good fit for the data. This green line here doesn't really fit where these yellow crosses are. But an exponential line, which we haven't done much work on just yet, is a much better fit. So a y equals a b to the x form is going to be much better. And obviously you've seen some exponential graphs in the news with the pandemic. Those are going to be where you would try and do um, an exponential model rather than a linear model. So let's just finish off this part here. It says in general we could use any model that might best explain the data. For example, population tends to grow exponentially rather than linearly, so we might make our model y equals a times bx, what I'm talking about here, and then try to use regression to work out the best a and the best b to use. So again, regression is trying to figure out what these numbers should be. You will do exponential regression in chapter 14 of pure year one and in chapter one of applied year two. But for now, we're just sticking for ones that should be in a straight line. So that's a little bit about what regression is. We're now going to see how we can use this in context of some questions.